I'm poet and writer Kay Spivey and I have cracked the code. What code you might be asking yourself? The Ruby Carr code. I was reading Ruby Carr's second poetry collection, The Sun and Her Flowers, and as I was reading it, I was thinking, what is it that this reminds me of? A lot has been said about the really short Insta poetry. A lot has been said on this channel about Insta poetry and kind of how I'm a little confused about how it's such a big trend and also like where it's coming from and why it's affecting people the way that it is because people respond so strongly to Insta poetry. As I was reading Milk and Honey, I was thinking about it and I realized the thing about the poems that she writes that is so good is the same kind of thing as picture books. Now stay with me on this. I was thinking about how the poetry is so short, you just flip through it. I mean, I've read both of her books in under an hour. Very quick to flip through all of the poems and get the full picture. And then I was thinking about how I had watched her recite her poetry, and I had thought, no, this is gonna be a weird recitation because it's really short, but she recited I believe an entire section of Milk and Honey. Now, if you're familiar with Milk and Honey, of course I've got my notes stuck in here, but it's broke into four sections. Doo -doo -doo. And she read, I believe, an entire section, reciting it as though it was a single poem. I was thinking, what else is kind of broken up page by page by page, but also an entire enclosed story within itself? Picture books. I'm not saying that to like belittle her. I'm saying there's a lot of good things in picture books. There are incredible picture books out there. And one of the things that they do so brilliantly is use poetic language alongside pictures. It's one of the reasons that spoken word poetry also works so well. The added acting on top of the poem really resonates well. The added pictures beside the poem resonate really well. And I realized that was one of the things that draws people into this style of poetry where you post a picture and the words to go with it, it gives you a little bit more than the poem itself can, and so you can say more with fewer words. Very similar to the way that the images enhance the picture in a picture book. For example, I happen to have Jen Campbell's Franklin's Flying Bookshop here, and if you look, just a few words, a picture to go with them, and then a few words on the other page with a picture to go with them is kind of the style. In Rupi Carr's poetry and in other poems, it's not just hers, some words, a picture to go with it, that wasn't the best example. <laughs> Here, jigsaw puzzle pieces to enhance the words. A similar kind of concept where there's a reason that picture books do so well with younger kids and that's that you can start to understand words, just written words, alongside pictures and it gives them meaning. Same thing with poetry. Sometimes it's very hard for people to read a big column of words and derive any meaning from it. This kind of goes towards the whole thing that's been going around about people, if you can visualize an apple in your head or not. Some people can't visualize an apple in their head. Now if you're reading a poem and you can visualize an apple in your head and they say apple, you're like, gotcha. But what if you can't visualize an apple, but there's a picture of an apple right there? Now you're on board, now you're with the story of the poem. Picture books also tend to be one story back to front. This is an enclosed story. In Rupi Carr's Milk and Honey, as well as in The Sun and Her Flowers, each of her sections works like an enclosed story. It works like a singular poem. I'm just saying, keep with me here. Now, the reason that I've got all of these in here is I wanted to also talk about one of the things that I noticed, which is that there's a lot of belittling of Insta poetry. I think for that exact reason, if you're the type of person who can visualize an apple in your head, you wanna know more about that apple, you really wanna get into what the feeling is that comes with that, you want there to be more words. But if the picture of the apple is there, you're already placing your own thoughts and words onto it. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? It's to it's almost a different medium. It's very much closely related to the way that picture books work and why they're so brilliant. So I wanted to go with a different thing because what you're saying to yourself now is Ruby Carr's material is not kid friendly. You can't be saying that this is like a picture book. Kids can relate to it. No, and I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is this style of writing resembles picture books in a way that another medium resembles picture books but also deals with adult themes 
and is often belittled by many people. What is that, you may ask? Graphic novels. Aha, you didn't see me going there, did you? No. But poetry and graphic novels actually have a lot in common, and it's that picture book link. It's the using rhythm in words and language and tying it together with pictures to help enhance the meaning. I want to point this out in a way that kind of goes back to how short Ruby Carr's poems are and how a lot of people, myself included, were like, is it really a poem? I'm going to show you one of her longer ones. This one here is just roughly over 100 pages. Alison Bichdell's Fun Home, which I'm sure you've heard of because now there is a musical for it, and if you haven't read this, this is a brilliant one. This does tend to be a wordier graphic novel, but this spread here, this famous spread, because this is of course the spread that has the famous song from the musical, which you may have heard about the, the keys. These, this spread also has just kind of over a hundred words. This spread and this spread very similar number of words. And so you're deriving meaning from the words alongside the pictures, alongside everything that has led up and everything that will lead after. More examples, more examples. Let's take the classic Sailor Moon. Now if you take a spread like, say this one, not a lot of words happening. A lot of it is happening in the images and is happening in the emotions that have come before and after. This spread here has a similar number of words in it as this spread here. Now a lot of Rupi Carr's work is kind of taken in a snapshot. You'll see one picture, one page, seen by itself, even though it kind of flows together into the entire collection. And I personally from the start recommended you read the entire collection front to back. Individual poems to me, I don't have a favorite poem from any of Rupi Kaur's work actually that just stands out to me. I recently read If They Come For Us by Fatima Asghar and in this one I had favorites. I have poems that still stand out to me that I went back to when I was done and was like, whoa. And I didn't have that same reaction to Milk and Honey or The Sun and Her Flowers because they weren't poems by themselves that I was just like, whoa. But I finished sections, immediately stopped and was like, whoa, that was quite a message you got across. In a similar way that with picture books, sometimes you just read the whole thing and you're like, that was quite good. Or chapters in manga or in graphic novels. One page may not really stand out to you, but the entire collection, the entire book, all really work together to be something impactful and something memorable. I was also going to do examples from my favorite, Giant the Homicidal Maniac, but I thought probably not because when I was looking through for pages that were going to be pretty okay for showing on camera and YouTube not being like, there aren't a lot. So I had been questioning why it was that instant poetry was so popular and I wasn't really understanding it. But at the same time, I did like Ruby Carr, what she was doing, and I realized other poets who do kind of the same thing, who are going for the same style of instant poetry with the picture and the entire arc of a story throughout the sections. I do like those. Some people don't seem to have understood quite what she was doing. There are some poets who just take the quotiness of it, the short little lines, and try and use that as though that works by itself as a poem. It's just lots and lots and lots of little ones like that that like, I know someone has described them as like Tumblr quotes and it is kind of, it does feel like that. And some of the ones in here do feel like that. Sometimes because you've already read them on Tumblr, they've been around longer than you know. The thing that works is the same thing that works in graphic novels and in picture books. And a lot of people do not keep that poetic form in mind. There is a rhythm to Rupi Carr's work as you read from front to back. There's a rhythm in picture books that are successful, that work. They use a lot of poetic forms, a lot of poetic language. There's a lot of rhyme in picture books. There's a lot of, I keep saying rhythm, but there is. And where the metaphor starts to fail, the rhythm then takes over. And it's interesting to find a collection like this where it's done in that way where the narrative arc is not contained within a poem the way it is in a lot of other poetry and a lot of poetry that I really like, which is why I think I kind of poo-pooed 
milk and honey a little bit, as I think we all did, because we're seeing it as though we're reading singular pages of a picture book and being like, this one page by itself didn't make a lot of sense. But the narrative is the entire book, the entire story. And it's interesting to see that in an adult medium. And I think that's why I kind of struggled with this and why I feel like some of the poets who write in this style also struggle with it because there there is a lack of narrative arc and in poetry that does tend to be an issue that throughout a collection there is a lack of narrative arc and that can work still quite well if within singular poems the narrative arc is strong that the singular poem stands on its own and comes back to you but the most successful collections do have a narrative arc beginning to end just like a novel because as adults we like that, but as children we also really liked having a full narrative. We liked having one collection be one thing. One book is one story. And that's something she does quite well. And now that I have finally cracked that, I think I understand a little bit better. I'm not saying that this is true of all Insta poets, but I am saying that a lot more of them that I see actually coming out on Instagram, doing this same thing, doing this picture alongside the poem that Rupi Carr became so well known for, they tend to get it a little bit better. There are still plenty that I have read that did not work in the same way. And I think that is what is brilliant about her. And so I wanted to share that with you today. Let me know what you think. Have you ever thought about poetry being similar to picture books before? In the comments down below, let me know what you think. Let me know if I'm way off base or if you're like, aha, like I am about why. This is working so well for so many people. You see, you see? How, how is Ruby Carr that, ooh, that's upsetting. How is Ruby Carr really that different from Nana? I mean, if you start thinking about it that way, poetry is really across the genre medium more than we think it is. Anyway, I thought that was cool. I hope you thought that was cool. Like I said, leave some comments down below and, I'll talk to you again soon. Good luck to all of us. Bye!